What is happening, people? This is Brian Alger with NeverState.com, and welcome to today's video, which I think is going to be a very important one because if I do my job correctly, then by the end of this, many of you will be able to determine some of your biggest deadlift errors and hopefully have some solutions for how to fix them. Now, do understand that I'm going to be covering a lot of information in this video in a quick sort of fashion. So if there is something that you find that you might need a little bit more help with or you need a little bit more in-depth explanation on, then you can find all of this, every single assistance exercise, every single idea that I'm going to talk about in this video, I've done complete detailed in-depth videos on at other places on my channel. And all that you need to do to find those things is go to the playlist section or use the search option for my particular channel. And just like all my other videos, I have added the timestamps down below so that this will be a lot easier for you to navigate if you need to come back to it for reference. Also, before we get into the actual meat of this video, I do need to let you guys know that it is a sponsored video from the good people over at Cove, more specifically, their commuter to speaker. Now, if you guys have been a fan of the channel for any amount of time, you have seen that I use these things all of the time. I've worked for Cove for quite a few years now and I have them scattered all over my house. If you buy one, it's going to look like this, brand new and shiny and look great. Mine is covered with mud because I am ruffling things. Uh, and it's truly because I use these things all the time for whatever task I'm doing, whether I'm working in the garden, splitting wood, doing the dishes, shaving. I'm always listening to eBooks or trying to take in some sort of information. Um, and since my cell phone just isn't loud enough, these come in handy a lot. Now it is a really nice speaker, so it does get loud. That said, the thing that separates this thing is that you can literally split it in half. So you can either get two speakers for the price of one. So if you have two people sitting far away from each other, you can each get a speaker. Or if you're by yourself and you want more of like a 360 degree kind of sound experience, you can absolutely do that as well. Now, um, I am obviously a fan of this and I use it every single day of my life. So if you guys are in the market for a speaker and you're looking for something you can use, the link in the description box down below and the code BA67 to save yourself 67%. Um, guys, I am a fan. I do use it for all of my tasks. If you guys need a good Father's Day idea or something like that, this will absolutely work. So I thank you guys very much. I am getting paid to talk about this but I am not getting commission on the sale, guys. So buy it if you want it, but I am only promoting because I do use it all the time. I believe in it and they are a really good company. So thank you very much, Co, for sponsoring the video. All right, and on to the topic of hand, which is deadlifts and the problems there within. Now, the very first thing that I do need to say about any of this is the biggest problem and the biggest way to get better at deadlifts is to improve your technique, which involves practicing the deadlift. So whether you're doing deadlifts for your warm up, deadlifts for your volume, deadlifts for your assistance, deadlifts for your main strength work, I want you to try to do every single rep as good as you possibly can. You are not just trying to get through reps. You are either ingraining good reps or you're ingraining bad reps. So whatever you do more of is what's gonna show up when it matters. You need to practice this. It is a hard, hard skill to learn, even though it seems like a big, dumb meathead movement. However, all of that said, do you realize that the number of ways that someone can mess up one of these movements is literally infinite, and the ways that you can solve that problem is literally infinite, so this list is definitely not exhaustive. What I did was looked on Instagram, YouTube, and virtually any gym across the world and tried to identify three of the biggest problems that you can see virtually everywhere. So the very first deadlift problem I'd like to talk about today is going to be when the athlete cannot break the bar off the floor. And there is a ton of issues that could be happening here. But the first place you want to start looking is the setup. Because if your setup is off, then your body positioning is off. It could be in your hands. It could be your feet are not in the right place. Your neck is not in the right place. Your lower back is off. But whatever is going wrong, your body is not able to use its natural leverages or its muscle to actually lift that bar the way that it is supposed to be able to lift it, all right? So if your setup is off, then your deadlift is absolutely gonna be off. And same, in that same vein is going to be your breathing and bracing. If you do not know how to use your diaphragm correctly and actually use your core as a stabilizing type of thing, you're gonna have a very, very hard time with just by any sort of compound movement. Breathing and bracing is the number one thing that you could possibly do to become a strong individual. Learn how to control and stabilize your core. Again, there are detailed videos on all of that in the playlist. Now, if you can be fairly certain that it is not your setup and it's not some sort of technique issue, then it is gonna come down to something. Strength very well could be a programming issue or maybe you went off programming and you added 20 pounds when maybe only 10 pounds was there. But if it is a strength issue, one of the first places that you look, if someone is struggling breaking the bar off the floor is going to be their quads. 
Now, two exercises that have really helped me in the past with breaking the bar off the floor, when it comes to my quads, are going to be front squats, but they actually need to be front squats, guys. It can't be some other sort of variation. They need to be front squats, they need to be deep, and they need to be heavy. Another exercise that has helped me a lot with this is going to be the front foot elevated split squat. Now, both of these have done a lot to bring up my quads, which if you bring up your quads, you get more pop off the floor in the deadlift and your speed will help you out a lot. Another great exercise that helped my deadlift off the floor but did not involve my quads was the good morning with the safety pin set to the beginning of my deadlift height. Now I actually was doing these in my very last training video if you guys want to see how I actually work them into a program. But all these basically are is a good morning where you set up the safety pins so that the bar on your back while performing the good morning will tap those safety pins when you are at a height where you would normally reach down, grab a deadlift bar, and begin your pull. What this does is make sure that you are using a full range of motion for what you are actually trying to target with the good morning. I love good mornings for a lot of different things, but if you're going to use it to actually help the bar break the floor on your deadlift, then you're gonna to have to increase that range of motion, which means you're also probably gonna to have to lighten it up and make sure that your technique is spot on because a sloppy good morning is not a good thing. Another area of weakness if you're having problems off the floor could be in your lats, either that you're not locking them in or that they are just weak and they're starting to unravel as the rest of your body starts to move. Now we're gonna get more in the depth about that explanation, but if you do want a bigger deadlift or a bigger anything lift, doing rows, weighted pull-ups, chin-ups, variations of pull-ups, every type of row you can think of is going to be massively, massively important. The bigger and stronger your upper back is, the better your deadlift number is going to look. And then finally for this section, the last exercise I'd like to mention is the banded deadlift if you have access to it. Now, even if you don't have access to a traditional banded deadlift, you can still throw a band over top of bar and kind of get it done, uh, and you will gain some benefit there. But banded deadlifts will teach you a couple things. Number one is how to recruit absolutely everything for your deadlift at one time. So when you decide to pull, everything goes at once. Number two, it's going to teach you to keep pulling no matter how bad that pull sucks. And then number three, it's going to absolutely teach you to be explosive. So if you do have any sticking points in the lower area of your shin, like below your knee, uh, being explosive off the floor is going to help a lot to blast right through those so that you don't have any issues. Now speaking of get stuck at the knees, that is a very easy transition into the second deadlift problem that I'd like to talk about, which is where the bar is either floating out in front of your foot or you are getting a scared cat back position, which typically one equals the other. Now very much like our last example, most likely the solution to this problem is either gonna be in your technique, in your setup, or your body positioning in some sort of way, or your breathing and bracing. However, for some lifters who get that scared cat back position, sometimes the solution is easy as changing the cues in their head. Because yes, absolutely, the things that you tell yourself inside your head change what you physically do, absolutely. So. A lot of people who get that scared cat position is because they're thinking about picking that bar up instead of pushing the world away. They can't stay locked in and they're bad. Their hips end up shooting up before anything else does. But the problem with deadlift is if your body does not work together and one thing shoots up before everything else, then it throws all the angles off. And most likely now, that bar is not over top of the middle of your foot and is floated out more in front. And the further that things move away from the middle of your foot or away from your spine, you can guarantee they are absolutely getting heavier. Now one of the biggest culprits for that bar being out front is that the lifter did not have their lats locked in or their lats were not strong enough to hold that bar in a position as the rest of their body tried to lift it. So if you're sure this is not a technique, a body positioning, or a breathing and bracing issue, then it has come down to strength and that leads directly to your upper back. So of course, again, weighted pull-ups, pull-ups, chin-ups, all variations of rows are gonna become very, very important. Guys, Every single time that you walk into the gym for a strength session, you should be doing some sort of pull-up or some sort of row if you want to move big weights in your future. But an even bigger issue than that weakness is that as your shoulders unraveled when you were trying to lift that bar up, you gave up a certain amount of real estate in your body that you cannot get back as that lift continues. If this is a one rep max, a true one rep max, and you get too far out of shape, there is no way you are going to be able to complete that lift with any sort of clean technique. However, as I've proven more times, not even an ugly pull can get done if you have a strong enough posterior chain. Now again, technique is king and you need great technique. Building up the strongest hamstrings in the world is no good if you have bad technique. That's like sticking a super engine inside of a car and then kind of skimping on the brakes, right? You're just 
gonna race towards a horrible, horrible ending. But if it is a sub-maximal pool, having a very, very strong posterior chain is going to do a lot to help keep you safe, as well as help you finish some deadlifts that you really don't have any true business finishing. But some exercises that have really helped me build up my posterior chain are the Zercher squat. I know everyone hates the Zercher squat, but it does absolutely throw you in such a bad position that you can't help but get stronger there. I also really like the good morning and a lot of its variations uh, to include like things like seated good mornings and stuff like that. All of you know I am a huge fan of any sort of front carry. If you guys have access to sandbags, carry those, carry kegs, carry big tree stumps, carry stacks of plates, carry a damsel in distress, carry a dude in distress. It's your life, do whatever you want, but pick something up, bear hug it and carry it long, far distances. You'll be shocked at what type of upper back strength and posterior chain strength you can develop just by giving things big hugs and walking around for a long time. And then finally, I also really like the Romanian deadlift or the stiff-legged deadlift. Um, I, I like the stiff-legged deadlift. I know it's getting on everyone's hater list right now, but uh, I've never really seen that big a problem with it as long as you execute it correctly. Again, videos on all these things in my playlist. Which brings us to the third most common problem that I see athletes with the deadlift, and that is that they just can't lock the bar out. Now, most likely what has happened here is just like if you were shooting a bow and arrow, right? If you're shooting a bow and arrow at a target that is only three meters away, you can do a lot of things wrong and still hit that target. We back you up to 40 meters away and now you're shooting, you make those same mistakes and you're probably not even gonna be anywhere near that target. And a lot of times that is exactly what's happening when someone cannot finish a deadlift. They gave up some sort of real estate or body positioning or they got they gave something up on the way to where they are in the deadlift and now they've gotten there they can't get it back and you could hold a gun to their head and there is no way they're going to finish that rep because most likely their shoulders are all rolled forward and their back kind of looks like a ninja turtle if you are always missing your deadlifts at lockout most likely you need to start searching somewhere further down in the deadlift for where the problem actually began however every once in a while there will be a person who has super strong quads and a super strong core and a super strong everything except for their upper back. And they can hold a great position all the way through the deadlift until the very, very top, and then it's literally like the finger of God just says no. If that describes you, then you either have upper back problems or butt problems. So upper back, we've already talked about, that's gonna be your pull-ups, your chin-ups, your rows of all variations and all of the time. You're also gonna like things like block pulls or rack deadlifts. I also wanna throw in my vote for all sorts of carries, whether they be front carries or farmer's carries or overhead carries. Guys, the only thing that I will say about any sort of carry is that it needs to be heavy. I will get emails all the time from guys who weigh 220 pounds and can deadlift 600 pounds and have a 100 pound sandbag. Guys, your sandbag should be at least your body weight. If it's not your body weight, you need to train up to that because that is the absolute lightest sandbag you should really be doing much with and farmer's handles, guys, you should be trying to use at minimum there also, like body weight in each hand if we're talking about a moderately heavy day. Um, I know that sounds ridiculously heavy if you're using dumbbells. I'm talking about implements there, but guys, you can't be walking around with like a 30 pound dumbbell and expect to get traps and a big upper back. It's, it's not gonna happen unless you weigh like 65 pounds. And then finally, I'd also like to give an honorable mention to the Bulgarian split squat, especially heavy and high rep because that can put a ton of stress on your butt. And if one of your problems is that if your body is a stick and the weak point is your butt, then that's gonna be the last point that you can't get to lock out. So you need a little bit stronger in the hip area. And Bulgarian split squats are a great way to isolate there. Anyway guys, there you go. So like I said, I covered a lot of things very quickly and kind of skimmed over stuff just to give you a lot of information so a lot of different people could apply this video. But now it's your job to take whatever areas that you think you need to work on and then go find those videos that go in depth, tell you how to tear it down, tell you how to fix it, tell you a lot more in depth ways that you can work on this so that you can do your homework, you can get your practice in and your deadlift will continue to rise. And guys, I do absolutely wanna thank each and every single one of you for giving me the opportunity to make these videos for you and just listening to me and just all the support you guys provide is just so awesome and I really, really do appreciate every single view, every single comment, every single subscribe, every single time that you tell someone about it, guys. It just, it helps, it helps more than you possibly could say. And Cove, I wanna say thank you to you just for sponsoring the video and just being such a good partner for so long. I absolutely love the speaker and I hope a lot of other people will love it too. Guys, I will catch up with you later in the week. Until I do, go out to something amazing with lives. Keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other and fix your deadlifts, people. Fix your deadlifts.
It's your technique, though. I'm telling you, it's your technique.